It is so great to be gathered with you all here in God's house once again. What a joy it is to be gathered here with you. If you're a guest, we are so glad to have you a part of our family of faith here today. And uh, as a way to say thank you for being here with us, we have a special gift for you that you can pick up at our Welcome Center. It's generally this way out in our fellowship area. But feel free to ask anyone around you, and they would love to direct you to where you need to go, lead you there with a smile on their face. Right, guys? Yes. Okay. All right. Hey, Pastor Bill. Yes, Pastor Mark. You know, I've heard a rumor, maybe it's not a rumor, that we are entering your favorite season Pastor in the church Mark, year. that is not fake news, okay? <laughs> Good. Okay. Do you want me to tell you what the season is? Yeah. Oh, do you all know what season of the church year this is? 
That is right, people. It is Advent. It is not Christmas time. Carly wants to get out the Christmas decorations. And I say, no, we will get out the Advent decorations, like the Advent tree with the, the, the Advent decorations. Yep, the Advent lights that go on the house, all of that. I, I don't know what Advent decorations look like. They look just like Christmas decorations, except before Christmas, they're Advent decorations. Gotcha. Okay. That's right. Well, for those of you that don't know what the Advent season is, the Advent season is all about preparation and waiting uh, for Jesus to come back. Not just as a, as a little baby, but as a, um, a victorious Lord and Savior riding in and, and, and splitting the heavens in two and coming back and bringing hope and peace and love and joy into this place. And so it gets me pumped up even thinking about it. It is Advent season, people. Amen. Amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. Well, before we get into our worship, you, we have a lot, a uh, great message by Pastor Bill in store for you here today about hope. Uh, but let's take a moment to look at what's going on here at St. Paul's in the weeks ahead with our weekly blueprint. Welcome home, church. It is such a blessing to worship with you. At St. Paul's, it is our mission to love God, build a home, and change the world. As you enter this Advent season, you can build up your relationships, homes, and families through the love of Christ. And we have a plan to help you get connected and invest in others. This is your weekly blueprint. Church, this Advent season, be sure to take hold of every opportunity to worship and prepare your heart for Christmas. During weekend worship, come to understand the deeper meaning of hope, peace, joy, and love during the Advent season through the new series, While We Wait. Then engage in midweek Advent worship and see this season through the mind of a child. Beginning this week, come weekly on Wednesdays in December at 12.15 p.m. and 6.30 p.m. Thanks to several ministry teams, lunch is available following the midday service, and dinner is served at 5.30 p.m. before the evening service, both in the dining room. This year, we're excited to include a special sharing of the Christmas story by students of our St. Paul's Early Learning Center as part of evening worship on Wednesday, December 4th. Please help us extend a special welcome to them and their families. You won't want to miss it. Get the full Christmas experience by singing praise with our choir and team on Christmas Eve. Rehearsals are happening on Sunday mornings at 9.15 a.m. and also Thursdays at 6.30 in the choir room. In just a few weeks, you are all welcome to experience Christmas through the greatest carol ever sung at SPL. With Christmas Eve worship at 6 and 8 p.m., and Christmas Day worship at 10 a.m. Over these next few weeks, consider taking the next bold step in your journey of faith. Following Christmas, you can enter into a whole new season of your walk with Jesus through the rooted experience. We'll tackle the big topics in weekend worship beginning January 4th and 5th, and you can dig into the rooted experience in a small group setting. Learn more at spldecatur.org or by connecting with Pastor Mark. With Giving Tuesday approaching this week, we are reminded to live out Jesus' example of love and generosity toward others. Consider growing God's kingdom through SPL with a year-end gift to the General Fund, SPL Foundation, a related ministry like our Lutheran School Association. You still have the opportunity to bless others through the SPL Angel Tree. Please return all gifts by Sunday, December 8th. Finally, you can help prepare for our upcoming backpack packing party for Decatur Kids Bags of Hope. Return food item donations or monetary gifts to SPL by December 15th. And find out more at the Hopeful Backpack Project table located by the Connection Center. You can find out about everything coming up at SPL in your worship guide. And you can also connect online at spldecatur.org and through Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you have any questions or you need assistance while you're here with us, our team is happy to serve you. Now let's get on our feet, church, and get ready to worship. It's time to greet and welcome one another.
Well, we are going to, uh, as it is Advent, start off our service here in a little bit of a different way, but I think very fitting for this season. Uh, Advent is a time of uh, anticipation and waiting and preparation. Uh, and, and the thing about waiting is, right, the longer you wait, the, the more the anticipation builds. And, and just the same way with our Advent wreath, it, it builds, it grows, right? The first week we light one candle and then we light more and more. And so that reminds us of the hope and the anticipation uh, that builds in us throughout this season as we long for our Lord and Savior to come. Uh, so we're going to start off with the lighting of our Advent wreath. Uh, today we light the candle of hope, and that's our theme for today. And uh, we have the Kramer family, family that's going to be leading us in that today. Today we light the first candle of the Advent wreath. Each candle has a meaning. The first candle is hope. Psalm 33, verse 20. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Can we everybody say the prayer with me? Come, Come on. On. We await the coming of our Savior. Give us the courage to hope. Give us, Give us grace, grace, grace to see your plans of redemption for our lives. For this
our prayer that you would come and come quickly to meet us. That you would come and meet us here today, Lord, in our brokenness. But Lord, don't look upon our brokenness and our shame and our guilt, our sin. But look on the righteousness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. That we would be covered in his righteousness. So Lord, we cry out to you, Heavenly Father. We cry out to you in mercy for Jesus' sake, in great hope and expectation, a confidence that as we do so, you will fulfill your promise, that you will forgive our sins, wash us clean, and renew us, giving us new life. Hear us, Lord, as we cry out to you. Almighty God, we confess that at times our doubts and override our hope and faith. Forgive us when we lose sight of the joy of your love and instead fall into despair and gloom. Lift up our spirits, Lord, and help us to remember the promise of new life here and now, not just the hope of resurrection for the future. Amen. It's because our Lord came, that he came to bear our suffering and our sin, to die in our place and to rise victorious, that we can be sure and certain that we can have a hope that our sins, that your sins are forgiven here and now. You are washed clean. You are white as snow. Know here today confidently then, friends that you are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing in that joy. How great the chasm that lay between
Lord, we thank you and we praise you. For you are a great God, an everlasting Father, a mighty creator. And Lord, just like children, Lord, we are your beloved children. And just like children, we struggle, Lord. We struggle to wait on you. We become impatient. We begin to doubt and wonder, Lord, if you are going to be faithful. But we know, Lord, we know that you are. For you have shown your faithfulness again and again and again throughout history to your people, Lord. And so we know that your promises are sure to us. Help us to wait in hope, Lord. Yes, longing for what is to come, for something better, Lord, but also resting in you here and now, that you are with us. Do you not, do not leave us alone while we wait, Lord, but that you have sent your spirit into our hearts as a guarantee, as an assurance of the hope that we have to come in you, Lord Jesus. That the price for our sin has been paid and that we have the promise of new life both here and for all eternity with you. Lord, we pray that you would pour out your hope to those who are suffering, who are ailing in their bodies. We pray especially this morning, Lord, for, for all those who are on our hearts and minds. We lift them up to you, Lord. And we, we commend them into your care. We pray that you would keep them in your care, Lord, that you would give them hope and peace in this time. Lord, we pray uh, also for those who are were uh, hurting, Lord, who need your comfort and peace in the midst of the loss of a loved one. And we pray especially this morning for uh, the family of and friends of Barry Mel, Lord, that you would uh, meet them where they are, that you would walk alongside them, that you would let them know that you are by their side that you would comfort them, Lord, and remind them, Jesus, of the hope that is in you. Lord, we, we give you thanks uh, for 40 years of marriage together for Dale and Molly Schaffnacker, and we pray, Lord, that you would continue to be in the midst of that marriage, that you would draw them closer to you, Lord, that you would fill them up with your love, that it might spill out into each other's lives, that they would show a sacrificial love that you have shown to them. Lord, continue to draw them closer to you and, and bind them to one another even more uh, tightly in the years ahead. And Lord, we continue to pray for all those in our Decatur community who do not yet know you. We pray that you would, you would make us to be your witnesses. For all those who are hurting and broken, Lord, who are, are hopeless looking at their lives and at this world, we pray that you would help us to be your ambassadors, your messengers of hope in this dark world, Lord, that we would bring light and life. Help us, Lord, to be bold, to be aware of the opportunities that you give us to nudge people one step closer to you and then to take that step, trusting that you will be faithful, Lord, that you will do according to your will, that you will be the one to bring more, to come to know you and your life-giving truth. All this, Lord Jesus, we pray in your mighty and powerful name, and we pray that prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Congregation, you may be seated at this time, and kids, you are free to go to SBL Kids Time. Uh, we enter in this time of offering as we worship the Lord. Uh, giving back to him what is but his own, an act of love for us, saying, Lord, this stuff doesn't matter to me as much as you. A reminder for both for members and guests that there are worship cards in the pews in front of you. Please fill one of those out. Pass them toward the center aisle. We'd love to know that you're here with us. 
worship the Lord. We thank you that you have promised to be in this place with us. You say where two or three or more of us are gathered in your name, that you will be there among us. And so, God, we pray that you would be here among us. Holy Spirit, come and fill this place. Speak your word. But, Lord, we also pray, Jesus, if this is the time for you to come back, for you to split the sky open and and come back, Lord, we pray, come quickly. 
come quickly, Lord. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Wouldn't it be cool if, like, as I was praying that, like, Jesus, <laughs> shut up, Pastor Bill, it's time, you know. I don't think he would say that word, but anyway. So as we get started into this Advent time, um, I just want to talk a little bit about what Advent is. Because Advent is my favorite time of the church year, and so Carly knew that she, she was um, very kind and let me come and teach in her classroom. Uh, so I was teaching the third graders all about Advent. And so I, I was having a discussion with these third graders, and, and I asked, well, what is Advent? And, and one third grader put up their hand, a St. Paul's kid, by the way, so way to go, children's ministry. Um, he raised his hand and he said, Advent is about knowing that Jesus is coming back and being super excited for it. And I thought, wow, that kid has a great teacher. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You're a great teacher, but that's my wife, okay? Um, Advent is all about expectantly waiting for Jesus to come back. It's that moment when you tell your kid, hey, kid, we're going to Disney World. And we're going to do it this summer. We're going to go and we're going to have a blast, right? And your kid is all of a sudden like, okay, but can we go now? Okay, but what about now? You know, two months down the road, they're still like, I, I understand that it's six months away still, but can we go to Disney World now? It's that anticipation. It's that anxiety. It's that longing, that desperation, right? And, and you know that as the day approaches, the anxiety rises. Right, that, that if we're going to Disney World tomorrow, Pastor Bill is not sleeping. You know, like he is, he is anxiously awaiting this. And Advent is a time of anxiously awaiting. It's a time of hunger, anticipation. It's a time of desperation, getting ready for when Jesus comes back. And we know that he is coming back, and it's super exciting. It's, it's this promise that Jesus is going to bring back all of the hope and the joy and the peace and the love that we need. Advent is about looking, looking back and seeing all the promises that God made uh, to his Old, Old Testament people, Israel. It's about looking back and seeing that, that he promised Jesus to them. And he was faithful to fulfill his promises. Advent is about looking forward and, and thinking about Jesus coming back again because he made that promise that he was coming back. Advent is about being in the middle of hope being promised and promises being fulfilled. It's about understanding that we're all together waiting. And, and honestly, here is what I love most about Advent is that you and I, we don't have to put on these fake good Christian masks during Advent, you know, where we're like, oh, I'm experiencing all the hope, all the joy, all the peace, all the love that I could hold. No, we get to be honest with each other and say, you know, there is so much more to life than this. There's so much more hope, and I know that I'm experiencing some hope, and I'm experiencing some joy and some peace and some love right now, but, but I know that there is something so much bigger and so much better you know, this is what I love about Advent is we get to wait and we get to understand and we get to embrace the fact that none of us are feeling all of the hope, love, joy, and peace that we could possibly experience right now. It's understanding that this world is hurting at times. And so when I got to hear about my topic for today... It got me super excited because my topic is hungry for hope. And hope is all about waiting. It's all about anticipation and desperation. And hope just gets me excited, you know? And I had three shots of espresso this morning, so I'm amped, all right? Here we go. I want to tell you that hope and faith are intimately connected. Hebrews 11, Hebrews 11 says that that. Faith is confidence in what we hope for and certainty of what we do not see. Hope is about knowing the promises of God are going to happen. How we hope and how the world hope are completely different. How the world hopes is kind of, you know, crossing their fingers and, and hoping that something might happen. 
There's no certainty involved to it. But when we as a church hope, we hope with certainty. It's a knowledge. It's a knowing that God will fulfill his promises. And hope is something that we as a church have always done. The world, on the other hand, the world needs to hear the hope that we have, don't they? We talk about um, that, that proverb. Solomon uh, wrote a proverb that talks about hope deferred makes the heart sick. And isn't that true? Hope deferred, hope pushed off makes the heart sick. And when we look at the world around us, there's a lot of sickness going on. There's a lot of hopelessness happening in our world. People all around us are becoming sick to the point where where mental disorders and depression and anxiety are on at an all-time high. Hope for this country is at an all-time low and the future of it is at an all-time low. Hope for this city and the community around us tends to be an, at an all-time low. People need to know the hope of Jesus, And the struggle is that, that when they don't know the hope of Jesus, they, they start to cling to anything that might give them just a, a small ounce of certainty. And when that small ounce of certainty fails them, then they lose hope again. And they just keep getting more and more sick, more and more hope deferred. Hope keeps getting put off. But we as a church... We as a church, hope is what we've always done. You and I, we were made for hope. We were made for this moment of hope. Because that's what the people of God have always done. Look at at Abraham. Abraham is our spiritual ancestor. He lived a, a quiet and comfortable life. He was surrounded by people that he cared for. His his family and friends were all there, and and he had lived in this place his whole life. In fact, for 75 years. But at the age of 75, God called him out of his comfort zone. Into a place that, that he didn't know anyone. He called him away from his home, all of his, his family and friends. And so he left with his wife and his nephew. Abraham left behind all that he knew, holding on to the promise that God had given him. I'll make a great nation out of you, and I will bless you, and and through you all the nations of the earth will be blessed. That's what God had promised. The problem was, Abraham didn't have a son, but God had promised a son. And if you know the story, then you know that, that it was 25 years before God fulfilled his promise of having a son. And for some of you, 25 years doesn't doesn't seem all that long, but Abraham looked to that hope. He clung to that hope that God would fulfill his promise. And in Romans 4, Paul writes that against all hope, against all, all logical thought, Abraham hoped and believed. And so he became the father of many nations, just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead. He was about a hundred years old, and, and Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promises of God. He was strengthened in his faith, and he gave glory to God. And being fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he had promised. See, Abraham hoped. He hungered for that hope to be fulfilled. Abraham needed that promise to be filled. And the one who was hungry for hope was indeed filled. And years later, the people who were that son Isaac's descendants, they were forced into slavery. They'd been forced into, into building stuff. Pastor Mark says it's pyramid, or it's not pyramids, but I've seen that Charlton Heston movie, so I think it's pyramids. 
Uh, that's not true. I don't think it's, I believe Pastor Mark, actually. Exodus 1. Exodus 1 says, The Egyptians made their lives bitter. They made the Israelites' lives bitter with harsh labor and brick and mortar and, and all kinds of work in the field and all their harsh labor. The Egyptians worked them ruthlessly. The Israelites, the people of God, longed for freedom. They longed for that day when all of the injustice they've experienced would be made right. They longed for that moment when the shackles would be released. All the pain would be gone. All the hurt, all of the, the shame that comes with being a slave, all of the, all of the slavery would be gone. And, and they knew that God had promised them this. But church, that day didn't come for 400 years. 400 years, day after day, month after month, year after year, these people waited in the midst of slavery. They waited for God to do something. People died hoping in this freedom without ever getting a chance to see it. And in that moment when all hope seemed lost, God provided a savior. He rose up a young man named Moses. And through Moses, God did signs and wonders and miracles. And eventually God split the Red Sea in two and led his people through on dry ground to the other side. And you can just imagine that as the, as the last Israelite stepped foot on dry ground and the, and the seas fell back into place and there was this calm breeze and, and that thought, that collective thought just came into their mind that it's happened. We're free. We're free. And, and those who were hungry for hope They were filled. And after those Israelites crossed over the sea and and they spent some time wandering and, and they finally settled into their land, which is another story of hope being fulfilled, isn't it? There was this young woman who who wanted a son. Her name was Hannah, and and Hannah had a problem. Her husband had another wife, and that other wife had kids. And that other wife would scorn Hannah, and she would mock Hannah, and, and Hannah just wanted a son, and she would cry out day in and day out, Lord, remember me and give me a son. There's this story of her weeping in the temple, praying, God, remember me. And she's weeping so much, she's, she's so hysterical that the priest thought she was drunk. And she replied to him, I'm just a woman who's deeply troubled. I've not been drinking wine or beer. I was, I was pouring my soul out to the Lord. I was pouring my soul out because I needed hope. And God heard her prayers and she gave birth to a son, Samuel, who'd be a prophet. See, she longed and she prayed and she hungered. But the one who hungered for hope was filled And that son, Samuel, he'd go on to anoint two kings, the later one being David. And David wrote in his Psalms that he longed for a savior. He knew full well of his brokenness and mistakes. Listen to his plea. He writes, have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from sin. See, this man hoped for someone to come and remove his brokenness. He longed for someone to forgive his sin. He needed it so much that he continued to write song after song after song. And these songs would even invite other people in to this hoping process. He writes in Psalm 130, O Israel, put your hope in the Lord. For with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is is full redemption. This man needed a Savior, and he hoped for one, and he prayed for one, and it wouldn't come for 400 years. 
but 400 years came and went, and, and God filled that hope. It was through God himself coming to this earth and dying on the cross and, and rising again victorious. It was through that man, Jesus, that, that David's hope was filled. And there was this story in the book of Luke of a woman who was sick and bleeding for 12 years. This is not saying that she was bleeding once a month for 12 years. This is saying she was bleeding for 12 years. She needed healing. And if there was anyone who needed just a small ounce of hope, it was this woman. She was broken and hurting. And she heard about this man named Jesus. And she knew that, that she didn't even have to go and talk with him. He didn't have to look at her. He didn't have to touch her. If only, if only she could just touch the hem of his garment, she would be healed. And so she went in hope. She was healed. She who hungered for hope was filled. And church, I don't know which of these stories connect with you the most. I don't know what you're hoping for today. Maybe the question is, what are, what are you sick of? If hope deferred makes the heart sick, then what are you sick of waiting for? Where do you feel empty inside? Where do you need Jesus to bring in an ounce of hope for you? Do you hunger for hope like Abraham did? You hope for a promise to be fulfilled. Have you been, have you been pulled out of a comfortable situation, a place surrounded by people that care for you? Have you been put in a place that makes you feel chaos? And you're just hoping, hoping that God would bring some ounce of peace, some sense of normality to your life. Do you hunger for hope like Abraham? Or do you hunger for hope like the Israelites? Are you, are you hoping for freedom, freedom from addiction, freedom from doubt or depression? Have you been chained up and shackled by that, by that horrible struggle of anxiety? And you know the passage of, of who the sun sets free is free indeed, but you still feel trapped by how people view you. Are you looking for hope in a way that you know you just keep messing up in that one struggle? You keep failing that one addiction, and you're just hoping, praying that God would somehow remove you from the situation. Or maybe you hunger like Hannah. You hunger for a son, for a child. You weep and you plead and, and time after time after time you don't hear an answer. Or maybe you have people around you slandering you, gossiping about you, spreading false lies and, and rumors about you and you're just, you're just praying that God would bring some sort of justice or vindication and, and you cry out for it and you're hungry for it. Or maybe you're hoping like David was. You're hoping for a savior. You, you look at the life that you're living and you know that, that the shame and the brokenness that you're carrying is not the way that life is supposed to be lived. You see your sin and you think, I just need an ounce of hope. I need a savior. I need someone to rescue me from this life that I've brought upon myself. Or maybe you, you hunger for a healer or a resurrector. You feel like the sickness has been sticking around for too long or the emotional and relational distress seems to have no end. Maybe you're just hoping, praying, pleading for someone to come in and heal your marriage, heal your home. It's so much so that you think that, that going to church and, and, and getting around people that, that can fix you might help. Maybe you're just hungry. You're hungry for someone to come in and, and fix your situation. Church, the same God 
that filled the hunger of Abraham. The same God that filled the hunger of Hannah and the Israelites and of David and that bleeding woman. The same God that filled the hope, the hunger for hope of all those people is the same God that fills our hunger today. And today, as the people of God, we hope. That is just what we do. We don't hope as the world hopes. We know with certainty. We expect confidently that Jesus will come back soon. We hope and we know that he will wipe away every tear from our eye. We know he will bring freedom and healing and a place to belong. And he will bring resurrection to our loved ones. We have a certain hope that he will bring resurrection place. And so we hunger for hope. We wait for hope. We, we plead for hope. And someday our hunger for hope will be filled. All of the promises of God are going to come to fruition. There will be no more anxiety. There will be no more depression. There will be no more cancer. Amen? We hope in that day. But until then, until that day, we live here in the middle. In between promises being given and promises being fulfilled, we live in a world where we have to continue to hunger, continue to wait, continue to pray. We live here in the middle, and while we do that, while we wait for hope to be fulfilled, well, church, we've got two jobs. The first job is this. We're called to remind each other of the hope that we give, the hope that we have. See, you and I, you and you, we're all a team. We are all in this together. And Lord knows there are times when I need to be reminded to have hope. And so when I have lost hope, it is your job to come up to me and say, Pastor Bill, remember that those who hunger for hope will be filled. And I know, church, that there are those among you that need to know that there is hope. And in those moments, it's my job, it is your job to remind each other that those who hunger for hope will be filled. That's what we're called to do, to remind each other of the hope that we share and the hope that we have. And church, the other job that we have is to go out into the world, to go out into the world that is hungry for hope with no place to get filled. And we're called to go out to them and we're called to say, hey, I see that you're hungry for hope and I know that those who are hungry for hope will be filled. In fact, I've got a place for you to be filled. I know the one who can fill you, the one who is certain, the one whose promises are true. We're called to go out into this world and bring hope into this dark land because we know, we know where to be filled. So I need you to get out your Bibles. There's a pew Bible right in front of you. We're going to Psalm 130. When someone gets there, shout out the, the pew page number. 518. Church, this is the hope that we have. This is our brother David reminding us of the hope. So we're going to read Psalm 130 together, okay? And we're going, to, we're going to remind each other of the hope that we have. So we'll read, Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, so that we can with reverence serve you. I wait for the Lord, my whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord, more than the watchmen wait for the morning, more than the watchmen wait for the morning. O Israel, 
Put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all of their sins. Amen. Hear that certainty once more. He will redeem, and he will free from all of our sins. We have a sure and certain hope in this, that those who hunger for hope will be filled. Amen. I'm going to do a blessing. I'm not going to just walk off. I'm going to do a blessing. Hey, everybody stand up if you can. (laughs) They were hoping for a blessing. They got to wait for it. That's Advent. That's right. (laughs) I'm afraid I'm going to burn myself. Um, Hear this blessing from our God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his everlasting peace. Amen.
such a blessing to be gathered with you all here today. Uh, remember that this week we start our midweek Advent services, both at 1215 and one at 630 with a dinner before and a lunch after those services. So please come out and join us for those as we travel along through the season of Advent. Go in peace and serve the Lord. <laughs>